Okay, what exactly is it? Because I did a quick Google search, but I didn't want to look too much into it before the show because I wanted to be uh, surprised. So what what is it? What is it? It's a large creature about as tall as a tree with a lipless mouth and jagged teeth. Apparently, its breath has a strange hiss and its footsteps are full of blood. Well, that just sounds like Cody. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like my Sunday morning. <laughs> I was going to say, like, the ideal dinner party guest. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Hello, theologists or sisters and misters. Welcome to the coven. All right, so this is a super special episode. Uh, we're doing our very first collab with Haunting Season. Guys, do you want to introduce yourselves? Nah, I'll pass. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know we were getting into, wait, this is a coven? <laughs> what did yeah, I, Tony, I sent you? It is I now. I sent you an email. I, I, well, I didn't read, I don't read emails. I, I get emails and I just like texts, I just go through them. I, I'm not Cody, reading them. Cody, it was in the briefing. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. All right. So I'm in a coven uh, yeah, now? Yeah, so we're, yeah, we're in a coven now, but uh, where we come from, our origin, if you will, um, we're from a show called Haunting Season, and we go through the past, present, and future of our greatest fears. And so every month we pick a fear that we think is common or interesting, and uh, we'll start off by telling a story, and then uh, we'll do an episode about the past of it, where it came from. Then we'll do an episode about the present and how it's going now with that sort of fear living in our lives. And then we philosophize about the future um, of how scary that fear might possibly get. Or embracing it. I do that with Emma. Oh, with the, yeah. With the tarot readings. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, you're so right. God, talking about my future, especially we did a tarot pull last night. I am terrified. That's why they call it tarot. Because you're terrified. Tarot-fied. Tarot-fied. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. how do you know it's not Arthur just messing with you? He very well could be, you know. Uh, <laughs> Why for- would I? I I told you I spent like four days writing out the descriptions. You very well could just pull, you know, whatever card out of your ass. I know you say that my card is the fool, so I know that that's just wrong. But that that's might be right. What's wrong fool. with being the fool? Like everything. You know. <laughs> You know, says the fool. That's something says to embrace. Fool. Is is the fool? Uh, you know, we just did something about uh, that. Remember, we had Colby on our on on the haunting season, and she like pulled cards. And there's like a lot of misconceptions about what like each of these cards kind of represent. Oh yeah, and you like can death embrace... doesn't actually mean death. Right. It means exactly. change. Like yeah, yeah. Is that something is from your past might be coming to an end, or there's closure of something? Mm-hmm. Is not like oh god, you've got the death card. Or, you know, the fool is, like, considered by many to be, like, I don't know, Arthur, are you from, you're, are, you're, you're, you're dealing these uh, cards, pre-planned cards. You've stacked the cards against everybody to make everybody look Especially like Especially me. Yeah, yeah. So what is the fool? Is the fool, like, something to embrace, cherish, and... Emma, would you stop shaking your head? <laughs> <laughs> the fool is something to embrace because, if I'm recalling correctly, well, you know, I have a book. Hang on. You do have a book. He has all of his uh, meanings written out in his book that he uses constantly. Usually uh, in a lot of tarot decks, you'll get a pamphlet. This one didn't come with that. So you had to look up all the meanings. So now it's Dear Journal. Emma was a real jerk. So to tomorrow, I'm going to pull the fool card and tell her that. Exactly. (laughs) Straight up Dear Diary. This is how I'm going to ruin our friendship today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, okay, so I was correct. Yeah. It's about uh, taking risks and not letting the world hold you back if it's upright. So it's a lot about the potential of things like that. But it's also, if it's uh, upside down, if it's reversed, then it has to do with impulsivity and jumping into things without looking. Yes. Which is fine. And, you know, for me, it's more about the name than anything else. Because when I said, Arthur, why don't you why don't you do a poll? and find out which card I am. And he pulls a major arcana. And out of all of the cards in that entire deck, he pulls the fool. And I was very offended. Well, the most hilarious thing is you said, no, I want you to do it again. And I pulled the <laughs> fool again. <laughs> that was the worst. That was That's the one worst. one out of 78. <laughs> uh, that episode specifically. Oh, God, what was that one called? It was basically like uh, 
Emma gets called out by Arthur's tarot deck or something. <laughs> well, so so then are you saying that you would prefer to have like uh, the names of the cards kind of change? So instead of the fool, it would be like very daring. Or how about, I don't know, like the very attractive young female. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, Arthur, how come you're not pulling that card? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I well, feel it like sounds jumping like jumping f- off of a cliff is a bit foolish, though. <laughs> <laughs> but the best part is, is that we actually, so that was with his old tarot deck. So Arthur recently got a new tarot deck. So that's what we uh, recorded last night. My tarot deck probably appreciates that. So I said, well, now that you have a new deck, I wonder if this deck has a different opinion of me. Again, what card am I out of all the cards in the deck? Major Arcana. And Arthur, would you love to remind me what that one is? <laughs> the Hermit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Again, very appropriate considering the last. I know, uh, year right? That had. It felt very appropriate, but it was about mindfulness, and you know that one I can get behind. Something that, that I need to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Something we all can practice. Uh, but that being said, I mean, hell, it would be really fun one of these days to do a tarot pull for you guys. I'm, I'd have I'm so totally much fun. down down for it. Uh, now I'm a little on the outside, so what? The oh heck yeah, is... yeah, yeah your story like i i don't read text i don't read emails so i not... uh hello my name is emma i am the skeptic <laughs> okay <laughs> that's it but you believe in tarot cards but you're you're I... big, uh, offended by tarot cards i have a very complicated relationship with the supernatural i'm very much like you know like innocent until proven guilty i like to give everything the benefit of the doubt and you know i've also find it very fun to just lean into it do i believe that it truly holds that kind of weight that's neither here nor there that's something that Mm -hmm. we're still trying to figure out so for example when arthur pulled the fool twice in a row for me unless if he was fucking with me which is very possible when have uh, i ever done that with you i mean i don't know when have you it's been like 12 years well so i'm the boring one of the two arthur would you like to give a little blurb about yourself before we get into our story uh yes well she's the skeptic i am the witch so i practice witchcraft i've had a lot of supernatural experiences so we tend to go over those things i mean that sums it up that fits we we have a similar dynamic where um i've experienced some paranormal stuff and cody wants nothing more than to experience paranormal stuff and just for some reason cannot just can't pull it off Emma wants to, but no, I would shit she's myself. also terrified. So. I would absolutely shit myself if it ever happened. Like, I'll be the first to say it probably won't. But if it did. <laughs> there are several times where you've said, oh, I wish I had that ability to do that. But I would be absolutely terrified and shit myself. And I'm like, then why would you wish that? <laughs> then I obviously don't. I'm, again, a very complicated relationship. But no, I've never experienced anything that I know to be supernatural. Uh, but Arthur, on the other hand, has been telling me stories all throughout our 11-year friendship of things on and off. And I realized one day, I want people to hear these stories, you know, specifically because Arthur and uh, my our dynamic is so open with each other and there's no like boundaries when it comes to like what I can call him out on, what I can call bullshit on. And he'll usually give me, you know, the best answer. And if there's no answer, then we dive into that and we explore why. And so that's what uh, is really fun about uh, the two of us and what we try to do with the podcast. Well, and that's what I really love about your show. And, and one of the reasons I reached out in the first place is because I saw like, not only do you both have a very deep connection to each other, um, but the, the fact that you have not necessarily opposing beliefs, but, you know, opposing belief systems, maybe that are just like naturally very interesting. And I wanted to come on the show and i wanted to hear one of these stories and be able to react to it because i'm constantly like cooking and listening to your show and being like bullshit or no way you know so feed me (laughs) yeah let's do it okay arthur i know you had a very special story to share today do you want to take the floor of course this story is actually not a personal one that happened to me though bullshit oh sorry i'm just practicing I mean, if you want to call bullshit on that one, I don't have proof <laughs> that it didn't happen to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll listen. I'll be a good listener. <laughs> okay, so this story starts out with a friend of mine. I don't remember what age she was other than probably around elementary to middle school. Uh, there was a field trip of sorts that they went on into the woods There had already been stories of people going missing in that forest and just never coming back out. Sounds like fun. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So obviously, and this was a field trip? In that. Yeah, it sounds like a great yeah. location for a kids, field trip. Load up the bus. We're going out to a place where kids just disappear. Like, We're gonna come... thin the herd, kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mrs. Pinochle is uh, feeling a little overwhelmed. <laughs> oh my god, that's awful. Oh my god. Survival anyway, of the fittest. You know, I would hope that maybe the teacher wasn't aware. <laughs> I have no idea if that teacher. Yeah, but who just there. drives around aimlessly in the woods and be like, okay, kids, let's load up the bus and let's just go out to these random woods. This is our field trip for the day. You usually go see something of like a, a historical artifact. You go to a museum. You you go to a, some sort of uh, natural wonder, whatever. All right, all right. So you're being taken on a field trip to the land of lost children. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't just a daily field trip. This was an overnight sleepover field trip. <laughs> Only the best can happen. <laughs> so just around the time that they were supposed to head in, she thought that she heard a noise, but she kind of brushed it off. And they went up to the top of the tree house that they were supposed to stay in. And everybody just went to sleep, as you do. At one point in the night, she described looking out the window of the treehouse and peering out and seeing eyes looking back at her. Nope. Take the children and run. (laughs) At almost the same level. Oh, so like it was at eye level. It was either in the trees or levitating or... Or it just so happened to be that height, which is accurate enough for a Wendigo story. Oh, God, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. (laughs) Then she started to hear banging and scratching that apparently didn't wake anybody. You know, you'd be, yeah, you'd be surprised the things you can sleep through. It was coming from the trap door that, you know, tree houses have. Yeah, that's like usually the entrance. I smashed my thumb in Peter's trap door so many times. That was my childhood friend. <laughs> oh my God. Every, every freaking time. <laughs> Hate trap doors. She was hearing banging and, like, scratching, and her immediate instinct was to go to the trap door, and rather than open it, which, I mean, why would you open it? Uh, she decides to lie down on top of it, which to me doesn't sound like a good idea, but go oh, off, I guess. I approve. I approve. It keeps the thing from opening. Yeah, the... it, yeah that's she what volu- she... She said, I volunteer to be the sacrifice. Yeah, she crawled on top of it and went to sleep. Oh, God. These are very tired people. <laughs> Dude, kids out in the forest, you tucker them out. They're well, out and how, well, okay, okay, So how many people are in this treehouse? Uh, it's a pretty big treehouse. I think she described 10 to 15. And she was the only one laying on top of it? Yeah, she was the only one laying on top of it. Most of the kids obviously would group together. One or two were nearby the treehouse. No lock. This is a large treehouse with no lock on the on the. In the the middle of the forest, where children have gone missing. Yeah. Yeah. Just to recap. Just it's a free for all. You can come on up whenever you want, (laughs) looking for a place to you know rest and slumber for the night. Make yourself here in the lost forest. So obviously most people, uh, when they wake up and they leave in the morning, they would assume, oh, it, it must have just been a nightmare or something. Which obviously is the very first thing that went through my mind is new environment. You new hear environment. a scary sound, your brain while you're sleeping, maybe, you know. All right, but continue because you apparently seem to have a counter to that already. Yes. She decided to turn around as they were leaving and she saw very large scratch marks that were not there previously on the area where that wooden trap door was located. But nobody went missing. Well, that's a, that's <laughs> well, a good that's story. Good. That's uplifting. <laughs> Moral of the story, when in doubt, sleep on the trap door. <laughs> yeah. Or have you tried locking it? Nah. Nah. That, that, that won't work. No. Nah. <laughs> sacrifice. Sacrifice. Is there a second night? Like, what, what happens next? No, they actually went home after that. Oh. That's the end of that story specifically. So, okay. First thing, right? Recap. Group of 15 or so small children, elementary school age, for some reason are told to go on a field trip to the forest of missing children. It's very safe all already. And they're camping out in a tree house, which I mean, cool, I guess. Also just dangerous in general. 
I went to school in the 80s, okay, elementary school in the 80s, and, you know, it was wild and crazy then. But aren't there permission slips? We had permission slips. Like, if, you know, if you're going to go on someplace, like, parents had to sign off and be like, eh, I don't want you going there. Yeah, no, that's a thing. That's still uh, a thing. Yeah, okay, so parents signed off on this, and they're like, oh, it's that old forest that all these kids disappear. <laughs> well, all right, Johnny, head on out. <laughs> I really do want to know, like, what the process of picking said forest was was it just because they're like well this one has a tree house so Probably. maybe i don't know it might <laughs> it was a trap i bet this is where we sacrifice the children obviously this one isn't my own personal story so so do you have a personal story about a wendigo no i do not and i'm so glad that i don't i don't want to interact or see one Okay, what exactly is it? Because I did a quick Google search, but I didn't want to look too much into it before the show because I wanted to be uh, surprised. So what? What is it? what is it? It's a large creature about as tall as a tree with a lipless mouth and jagged teeth. Apparently, its breath has a strange hiss and its footsteps are full of blood. Well, that just sounds like Cody. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like my Sunday morning. <laughs> I was going to say, like, the ideal dinner party guest. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I brought liver. (laughs) Illy, any man, woman, or child who ventures into its territory, and those were the lucky ones, sometimes the Wendigo apparently chooses to possess a person instead, which is new information to me. Oh, boy. So what if, what if it was scratching at the door and it was like, all right, I guess I'm not going to eat any children. I'm going to possess I'm the full. person. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not that hungry. I am a tree monster. Um, so I don't need much, just a little bit of light for my photosynthesis. Um, but I'm going to possess the person on the other side of this trap door. And what if that person has since been possessed and is the person stealing the children in the woods? Well, okay. So the idea that I know from, uh, from the little bit of research that I've done on Wendigo is that the reason for this folklore creature to exist was to deter cannibalism. And like, obviously I can only speak from what I've read, but the idea behind this is that this creature will either appear to those that like are cannibalizing and turn them into like horrific monsters or would possess somebody and possess that person to become a cannibalistic monster. What's also interesting is that the information is prim- primarily up in the north is where it's described. I was going to say, so what, what tribe is it associated with? Uh, it is the uh, the Algonquin, Algonquin or the okay. Algon- Algon- Algonquin. Yeah, one of the, however you pronounce that. <laughs> it's up in like, uh, I think Canada and uh, upstate New York. Yeah. Algonquin. It's really up. Gotcha. Yeah. I wonder if there's any connection between that and Bigfoot. Because Bigfoot's mm-hmm. like up there too, right? Bigfoot's I mean, everywhere. I, with him. I had him over oh, last what? night. He's a, he's a horrible <laughs> guest. He's a he's a real he's, he's an awful smell. Uh and he just goes through your fridge. He's not, you know, not a lot of conversation from Bigfoot, unfortunately. Well, I know it, 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 Bigfoot's got plenty of movies, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Are there Wendigo movies? Well, I know that there was a really popular game uh, that included a whole like Wendigo like storyline. It was called Until Dawn. And I know that sparked a lot of like on and off between like, this isn't actually what a Wendigo is and like the culture and the folklore. And then other people are like, but this brought it into like more popular culture and media. And then, you know, it's that back and forth between uh, because this is like uh, a folklore that's taken very seriously in uh like these native american uh tribes you know so it's that how do we like have that fine line between like we can appreciate this folklore for what it is and enjoy the stories versus like how do we like talk about it respectfully and i know that there are Mm -hmm. some people that refuse to talk about it because they think talking about it would make it appear Yeah. yeah Ooh, like slender man yeah or like 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 there's like like skin crawlers (laughs) Or a skin yeah, I was actually yeah, I was gonna bring up skinwalkers. West. Yeah, that which it's like, uh, and I grew up. Well, I lived in northern Arizona, and it's like really big in the Hopi and Navajo areas, and they they would be like, we don't even talk about it. Mm-hmm. We try not to, you know. But to go back, 
like Bigfoot has, has, has there's been like tons of spottings of, of Bigfoot, right? I mean, like Pacific Northwest, uh, Jersey area, all over Canada, yeah. all over like even really? like there's a Florida Bigfoot. I can only imagine what that guy looks like and what kind of diseases he's <laughs> Not carrying. <good. laughs> that, that's the worst. I can only think of a Florida Bigfoot. I, I don't know what he looks like, but his golf swing is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Um. Well, I find this all very fascinating because I wrote a story. A lot of my stories that I write take place up north. They take place up in New Hampshire because my grandparents have a cabin. Um, they basically they bought land up there in the 70s for like, you know, pennies on the dollar or whatever the phrase is right on the lake in this really tiny cove called Pickerel Cove. And I spent my entire life going up there every summer um, and just living in this like quiet, woodsy space. Um out in the middle of nowhere. And um, one of the places we would hike to was called Stoddard Rocks. And they're these giant like bus size boulders that are on top of this mountain that were left there from the ice age. It kind of has like feelings of Stonehenge a little bit, but like a lot less organized. And it's just a really cool place. And they're like relatively hard to find. They're not, you can't find them by sticking to the path. You have to like cut up the hill at a certain point And like, you just have to know. Um, and so I wrote this story about a woman who uh, is is basically like drawn into the woods and finds these and also runs into a partial goat, partial human, you know, maybe there's links to Native American, maybe there's links to Wendigo, I don't know. I honestly don't remember that much of it because I, I wrote the story seven years ago and put it on my YouTube channel, but I think we should have you guys onto our show and watch that and see if there's any correlating information from my, you know, bizarre storytelling from seven years ago um with this story <laughs> and like check for accuracy i suppose sure because i mean i'm <laughs> just full of shit so i mean Wait. i would so, love so am i this one too yeah emma you can fact check the whole thing and be like what that would not happen the temperatures <laughs> yeah. of that time of season <laughs> You know, I mean, I don't usually delve that far into it. Oh, okay. But I totally would if I had those resources. <laughs> but looking at the farmer's almanac from 1976. <laughs> I... <laughs> but yeah, so okay, so circling back that story, Arthur. So like, first of all, if that were me, I don't think I would have been brave enough to lay across the the door of the of the treehouse that sound yeah. that sounds I'll be honest awful. I would have taken one of my friends sleeping bags and pulled them over it <laughs> <laughs> they're the sacrifice I would have opened totally the door disagree. and thrown a child down and just been like, here you I go. I think you're all... Just see what happens. Okay. <laughs> here, here you go. Good luck. Here's, this I don't is like a sacrifice. this particular we friend. To, we all have to sacrifice here. I think you're all wrong. I think laying on top of the, the trap door is the only safe route because if you think about it, trap door is open on a hinge. If you're on top of it and the thing is strong enough to open you, you get hidden behind the trap door, you know, or against the wall. Out. And so everyone else gets eaten and you're just like, oh, don't look behind the trap door. And then they gently leave and close the door because they're not an animal and uh and you're safe you know everyone else is dead you you wake up in a giant pool of blood and none of it's yours yeah i, I wonder what the etiquette you is won. so if they if they just like open the door and then they're like oh shit i'm so sorry i didn't mean to do that uh <laughs> to you i'm gonna eat these children but oh lord i gotta clean up i've got to tidy the place after i leave and make sure you're okay oh it looks like you've got to will they reset the bone afterwards and then be like okay oh. like almost like a tooth fairy kind of thing where it'd be like the person would wake up and be like oh my god my life was spared and my my broken knee is is miraculously healed we never hear the good stories about the windigo i mean so now so like okay so the assumption is let's say there is a windigo traveling around those woods i mean that would be why children are missing that hey I mean, didn't i ask you to go into the woods with me and you didn't Yes, because that's dumb. Because animals exist. And yeah, I am you also animal food. told her to go outside with no cell phone at an odd you hour. You did. Of night okay, thank alone. you, right? <laughs> I didn't say don't bring a cell phone. No, you said to specifically to leave my cell phone. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. I remember. That. You were like, why don't you just like, hey, so like you're 23 and 5'2 and female presenting. Why don't you just like go outside at night without a cell phone, without a flashlight and just like yeah, experience what are you doing? it. Arthur. Just like well, experience I, it. Oh, I will say then no, Arthur said, well, I'll go with you. Entirely. I'll yeah. go with you. <laughs> that was the one where you were telling me about like moon water and I was calling absolute bullshit on moon water because I still think it's dumb. 
I think it sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it is drinkable. It's just the moon. It's like, hey, hey, moon, could you just like shine a little for a bit? It's like, oh, it's infused. I mean. <laughs> you know, I will say I, I thought crystals and stuff were bullshit for a long, long time. And then I had a friend who's Native American. I was sitting in a bar with her and I just came back from um, my very first ghost hunt and she didn't know this. And uh, she reached out and clapped right next to my ear, like without warning. And I was How? like, what was that? And she was like, oh, you just have something hanging around you. Um, and I was just getting it to leave. And then I was like, oh my God, I just went on a ghost hunt um, and told her everything. And so we one time got into uh, talking about crystals and I was like, I think it's bullshit. I think it's total bullshit that the rocks could blah, 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 blah. And she was like, well, you've told me you believe in God. So wouldn't you believe that then like if God created this place, it would be special. And like certain, like, you know, that maybe the rocks like have meaning and maybe like the moon could charge the rocks and make them have more meaning. And I was like, oh, fuck. I mean, like, that is a beautiful (laughs) way to look at it. And uh, I've said this many times. And since you've listened, you know my stance, which is very much like, I will never shit on anybody's beliefs. That being said, I'm agnostic. And there might be a God. Maybe not. That being said, it could just be pretty rocks. (laughs) Let me shit on your pretty rocks for a moment. I don't want to shit on the pretty rocks. No, no. Listen to me, Emma. I mean, like, I have 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 an an amethyst right here just for fun. Yeah, no, I'm going to call you out. I'm going to put you on blast right now. Oh, Oh, is this about the tiger's eye? Or is this about no. the uh, no? It's about the angel. Let light. Arthur speak. No. Let Arthur you... speak. <laughs> <laughs> no. You bought a necklace for your I thyroid. I did. And you wear it all the time I around wore your it neck. A couple times. And you brought go... it with you to Massachusetts. I did because it's pretty. So and don't it goes even. with my outfit. What, okay, hear me out. What what part of right. what part of Massachusetts? All right, all right, all right. What part of Massachusetts? Oh, all right. We could just talk about my that house. instead. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, like, it, it depends. It depends on details. what, what, what. If the stone is exposed, like to let's say, let's say Brockton or uh, Dorchester, it's not going to have the same effect as it would, like in, in, in say, uh, you know, Salem. Well, we did go to Salem. That's besides the, the location point. Oh, okay. of the stone does not matter. There's also, uh, gee, what did you buy your mother again? Okay, so like, can I uh, again? Wow, but also, I will explain myself. As I've said, I'm not the person to say whether or not something works. And if, let's just say that it does, that's great. If it doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. So what I did is I was looking for a choker necklace because I've been wanting one for a while and I have a uh, thyroid condition. And so I was like, if I'm going to get like a like a crystal choker it would be fun to have like a meaning behind it. And at the time I was also buying uh, like these light blue face masks and this like tie dye, light blue, white, purple shirt. And so I wanted to have like this whole quarantine outfit, quarantine chic. So that being said, I just, I found this adorable little choker that had like these three little angel light uh, crystal pearls, I guess. And, and it cured your thyroid. Oh, if only. I've never been more exhausted. <laughs> well, okay. So then you weren't actually looking like you weren't thinking like going into this like, oh, this is going to heal me. This is No, cure- I was I was looking into it as more of like, this could be fun. And hey, it's like a little mini experiment. Let's see what happens if I wear this for a week. And it's quarantine chic. And it's quarantine chic. And let me tell you, when I wear it, I don't feel any better. <laughs> Uh, so I mean, and you don't again, even feel cuter. I do feel cuter. I do. Well, there you go. It's working. <laughs> then there you but, exactly. It's supernatural. It's so, not working uh, as t- intended, but it's working. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the work. reason again why I bought it, and uh, we're also planning on having a whole uh, two-part uh, episode on our recent quarantine on trip to necklace. Salem. <laughs> that too. But we were planning on having this whole uh, conversation about uh, this recent trip to Salem that uh, I drove up to Massachusetts. We had both been quarantining. We were very safe whenever we left the house. Um, And so it was a nice little mini vacay for both of us. It was actually the first time we met in person since we've known each other. Oh my gosh, So that was, yeah, it was really great. What? Oh, uh, remember, children meet online these days. I guess. (laughs) Oh my God, well, so do adults, but um, I... (laughs) 
But this yeah, was back in like two thousands. Yeah, we met online in around twenty ten. How? On YouTube, actually. YouTube. That's awesome. Back when YouTube had like pages where you could comment on people's like channels specifically. The and it was well, ones too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have like the community tab now. And, and so Emma, you were where were you? Like eleven. <laughs> well, I mean, like where 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 were you? You were in Jersey. Yeah, uh, I've lived in this house my whole life. Okay, and then Arthur, were you uh, in Mass? Or Arthur's you... bounced around quite yeah, a bit. He's, he's been around. I was in Mass, uh, but I have bounced around quite a bit throughout my childhood. You're correct. Uh, I've been to, I want to say about twenty eight of the states. Wow, not good enough. So very different. <laughs> So what what content was on this YouTube channel? Like, what made you comment on on the channel? And who was posting the content? Oh, well, there was no content. Oh, you thought there was content? Why? Rude. No, I, mean, I was why a are speed you... painter and Okay, an fine. You How had dead. content. I had no content. I had over 200 subscribers and no content. YouTube was insane back then. <laughs> Wait, okay. So Arthur's posting speed drawings. Yeah. And, and you're like... Dude, your speed drawings are sick. I don't and even then you think guys that's happened. Best friends. No, I no, think. No, you never commented like once. What no. happened is one friend introduced None of this is us adding up. and wanted us to be friends. <laughs> yeah, it was all like mutual friends, friends of friends being like, hey, I met this person online. I know you online. Let's all have a friend group. And then so we all were, met up on shipped. Skype. As the kids say, yeah. we were shipped. Yeah, we were, sh- yeah, we were uh, platonically shipped. <laughs> We need we need like to open up a uh, like a genealogy website uh, so that we can track like who exactly what friends met who on the internet and led the led to this because like you guys are eleven <laughs> years into a virtual yeah. platonic relationship and now hosting this podcast together yeah and posting it on YouTube where we met there's it's just fascinating yeah, yeah uh, we're almost twelve years into it now. Um, Dear Lord. But it's it's funny because uh, because of our age difference. So Arthur is a millennial and I'm Gen Z. I'm like one of the Wait, eldest which, Gen which Z you older, can be. Which one's younger? I'm, millennial. I'm, I'm, millennials are older. I'm a millennial, technically. Okay. okay. I'm an Xer. I'm sorry to reveal this to you. I'm an yeah, Xer I, millennial, I guess. They're kind of, okay. I'm kind of considered a Xennial, which is the new term I've heard, which is like you're not exactly Gen Z, but you're not exactly a millennial. And you're like okay. right caught in the middle. So I'm technically considered a Xennial because I, co- I grew up with like that early 2000s stuff. But like, you know, that whole thing. But I wasn't like alive throughout the majority of the 90s. Um, but I was born in 97. So that makes oh, me Jesus. technically Gen Z. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny. Like there's like the, the millennials are now being like, man, this this is awkward. I'm now being called old. <laughs> yeah. By the, the by the younger generation. You well, know, be glad which... that you I guys Cody... are in uh, boomers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's yeah. actually not what's fun. actually scary about being called old uh, as a millennial? Everything. Is that I'm not called. I'm not called old at all. If you if you see me in person, I yeah. have been mistaken for seventeen. Incredibly young ages. <laughs> Not even 17. Remember that I said I went to my stepbrother's, um, what was it? It was, uh, it was like an interview thing for when you start sixth grade. Oh, yeah. What, and I they... was mistaken for a student who was very well versed. <laughs> they mistook you for a sixth grader? Grader? Yes. Jesus. Which is funny because I feel like shocked. most children with British accents are just assumed to be adults. <laughs> like even if they're five and look five, it's like, yes, young man, come on inside. Yeah. She was like, let me take your coat. Oh, are you here for the uh, for the interview the initiation thing? And I was like, no, no I'm twenty five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the super. And she was like, oh, I was going to say you're very well versed for a six year old, and I was like, thank <laughs> you. What, hey, well, how about this? What if you could change your identity and then you could go, if you can get into sixth grade, you could change your entire life. You could be considered a genius because people that are like, oh true. my gosh, look at this. Arthur is a, he's a sixth grade genius. Look at him. He's doing all this. But you, you know, you here's should the manipulate thing. the system. And then my you friend. could have a show on UPN or something. Yes, absolutely. No, but then they're going to make him show the birth certificate. 
Well, I can get, I can forge you that. Can't I can get you a, a new birth yeah. certificate by three o'clock tomorrow. Oh, great! No problem. Yeah, you got to make a Gen X friend. They are excellent at making fake IDs. Absolutely, you need. that's terrifying. <laughs> there are ways you don't want to know, but I can get you a new birth certificate, <laughs> Arthur. You'll have a new identity, and you'll be in sixth grade by tomorrow. And you'll be trending. Yeah, is, Arthur, you'll be trending by next Tuesday. Arthur that already is the had an clip. identity switch. Are you ready for like your third puberty? <laughs> Well, I I also had um, my my birth certificate's not even valid. Right, my dad's Perfect. birthday is off. Yeah, by like a day. Well, how did that happen? I don't know how they got that wrong. This is very spooky. <laughs> yeah, the Arthur's spooky not past of my um, non-existence. Apparently. I feel like if anyone could live off the grid, it would be Arthur. I did for a time. Like you've had a name change. You've been to like all the states. You've lived a little bit here, a little bit there. Half the time, I thought you were, like, when I was younger, I thought you were making half the stuff up because I could not comprehend someone moving around so much at this age. Yeah, are you already crawling? That <laughs> <laughs> was a moving around joke. I don't know. I got it. Um, have, have we hit on most of what you guys were planning for? Yeah, uh, I think this has been absolutely great and that we enjoyed having you guys on here so, so much. And this has been a wonderful conversation, a little off topic, uh, but I think uh, it's only going to help prep for the uh, other half of this collab. Yeah, yeah. So I want to have you guys over to our channel, youtube.com slash haunting season, and we're going to watch um, my, my episode about the goat thing in the woods, whatever it ends up being. I haven't even looked at it. I'm, it's going to be a surprise for all of us because most times I don't even remember what I wrote. And we'll see if it has anything to do with the Wendigo. Yeah, so uh, I guess for all of you listening now, if you want to go hop over there, I'm sure we will have a link in the description. Uh, please go support Haunting Season. Their content is incredible. Everything that they do is so, first of all, it's the production value is leaks above ours. <laughs> But again, such a fun collab, and we're very excited uh, to go record the other half. So uh, again, for any of you watching, uh, please go support them. Go uh, click the link in the description that will take you to uh, part two, and hopefully we'll see you there. And yeah, uh, are you ready for our lovely outro? Yeah. We always end saying, stay spooky. And then I usually just say bye. Stay spooky. <laughs> stay spooky, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>